Hi, my name is Roger Ponce. I'm 55 years old. Um, born and raised in Lansing, Michigan. Now live in a little town called Reed City, Michigan. I'm Terry Ponce and I'm Roger's wife. Uh, I'd say 10 to 15 years I've been blind. I've been able just to tell that, you know, it's light or day or night out. Ah, the biggest challenge is just everyday mobility. I think running into things for a challenge, you'd run into things. Yeah. It's very frustrating when you're trying to get from point A to point B and you, you run. run into things. I think that's very frustrating. And if you're sitting at a table and you're getting ready to eat your dinner and you don't know your cup is there and you go to get your fork and you knock your cup off the table, I think those are the kinds of things that Roger found the most frustrating. They kept asking, you know, that we, I don't think we had an aha moment like, oh my God, you can't see no more, because he did go blind slowly, but I do remember how I felt that day at U of M when we left and they basically told us, you have end-stage retinitis pigmentosis, there's nothing we can do for you. You know, I do remember that day, because what, what do you do? Go, okay, go home and be blind. And we do have a rich, full life, but that's hard to think about. You know, if, go home and be blind. I mean, this, this is something new. We don't know where it's going to go. It's, it's hope. It's, it's everything, really. You just got to believe in yourself, you know, and hope, hey, it's going to go a long ways. It's everything. Yeah. Because I do remember that day, because it's a long drive home after that. You know, it's a three and a half hour drive to talk about that or not talk about that. We got excited. I thought this this is this is for me. This is me. It's gonna work. I got on the phone to Carrie at the University of Michigan, Michigan, the coordinator for all this. She called uh, California by just out of the blue. I don't know who it was, but she got the president of the organization, and she started talking to him, and we just consistently made phone calls, and this is where it ended up. And we followed everything. I mean, and not everything panned out. You know, any lead about an eye, we followed it. And not, every, not everything panned out. So this was the only thing that looked like it actually had some, some future for us. And so we followed it. The minute it was FDA approved, we knew because we were watching the internet and checking Constantly. all the time to yeah. see when that was going to be FDA approved. And as soon as it did, I got on the phone. I was like, yeah, there it is. Uh, when they first turned it on, they turned it on once to check uh, the chip in my head, make sure there was no pains or nothing. Uh, they shut it back off. They turned it back on, and I'm thinking, there was a light flashing. Am I dreaming? Am I hoping? Or what? They, shut, they said, we're going to shut it back off again. They shut it back off again, and they turned it back on, and I just blurted it out. I said, there's a light flashing on there, and nobody said nothing. And I asked the doc, I said, there was a light flashing on there, wasn't there? Like, yeah, there was. We're just surprised you've seen that already. This gave us hope. Before, before this, when we went to Ann Arbor, there was nothing they could do. They, basically, it was, you know, you're in stage retinitis pigmentosis. There's no treatment. There's no care. And go home and be live blind. Live, live your life, they didn't yeah. say it that callously, but that is the reality. If you have RP and you're in stage, that's the reality. You went home and you were blind. There was nothing out there for this. And we looked at everything that came along for eyes. If, if there was a story about eyes, we read it. And until we read about this and found out about this, there was nothing you could do. There was nothing. And so just having something you can do um, was pretty amazing. Not running into walls and not getting so frustrated. He's less frustrated. I mean, if you, if you hit your shins, I mean, how many times can you hit your shins on the wall? Or, you know, how many times when you, you know, you're trying to get from point A to point B and you run into something? It's very frustrating. And, I mean, I could even see the frustration in his face. So just less frustration with everyday tasks. And it sounds so little, but to be able to have a plate of food in front of you and your cup. 
I know my cup is here so I can eat my food and not knock my cup on the floor. That sounds so small to people, but to us that is huge. To be able to locate your food on the table and to be able to manage that, to be able to walk through that door without slamming into the wall. Those things are huge for us. And, and we've gained that back. We've gained that back. A lot. We don't know where it's going to end. I say it's a life changer. We don't know where it's going to end. It's a lot of time and effort. Yeah. And I'm not going to even say it. it's It's a lot of time and effort. You have to really commit to this. And we have to sit down every day, and we call it eye games. <laughs> and we, we have fun no matter what we do. We call it eye games, and we sit down with the easel that was provided to us. I mean, everything was provided to us. And we've only had three training sessions with Ashley, yeah. the therapist. Mm -hmm. But she gave us things to do at home, and we work with that every day. And every day we incorporate, you know, that into our life. So every day we're working with it. It's been fun. I mean, every time we do something, he sees something more. I mean, I've, I've been teasing people about waitresses thinking I mean at restaurants, but you know, I'll we'll, we'll go out to eat. Okay, where's your plate? Where's your food? It's just been it's been fun again to try to to do those things. I think I think we've had a good time with it, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> he knows. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's a different question. No. <laughs> we played a little game with I a stick flashlight. I stuck the flashlight down my and shirt. And she stuck the flashlight down in front of her shirt. Because I knew he'd I find tell, that. I so I went like this. I couldn't tell everybody that out there. So I just said we played. <laughs> don't tape that. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that was the first thing we did. I stuck the flashlight home. down my shirt and I went like this, and I said, find me. And so I would, we'd turn out all the lights in the house. And I found and her every I would time. say, find me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing we did. Every day we discover yeah, something new. Some, this might be just a little thing of pointing this out or that out. Like the other day I said I didn't have to slide my hand across the refrigerator door to grab the handle, I just, boom, grabbed it. And that's the first time I've done that. Go get all the tests, to go find out what's what. And if, you want, if they want to do it and you want to do it, don't hesitate. I would make sure they know it's a process, not an event. I, I don't want anybody to think they're going to put those glasses that's on and see. That would be my biggest thing. You got it. It's a process, and you're going to see differently. So, don't you know? Have realistic expectations. You got to work at it. You got to do your homework after you have it done. You know, you just everyday, everyday thing. You got to put your glasses on, even though days I don't want it, days it's hard. You got to do your homework. And it's fun. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to say to the people who are giving my husband back vision. Are there words for that? I think about that a lot when I'm, when I'm with the people, with, with Dr. J and all the people at U of M and the Second Sight people. How do you thank people for giving your husband a chance to see again? The, go ahead, I'm sorry. I don't know how to do that. I, I, I'm sure they're sick of me saying thank you, thank you, thank you all the time. But what do you say to people? Words don't seem adequate to cover it. But thank you. They should be awful proud of themselves. I don't know how they ever came up with anything like this or designed it, but they should be geniuses is what I call them. And thank you very much for, for giving us a, a second chance at this, and thank you.